Good morning. Happy Easter to all. This, this Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. Our presider is Father Susky. Please stand. Blessed, happy, and holy Easter to all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, again, a very blessed and happy Easter to all of you. It is a blessed and happy Easter for all of us because Christ has risen. That is not just some theological idea or tenet of our faith. It changes everything. No matter what our circumstances on this particular day, no matter what our state of health, no matter how we feel emotionally, no matter how well we're doing financially, whatever our circumstances, Jesus' resurrection makes all the difference. It's hard for us to imagine the fear, the disappointment, the discouragement that must have been experienced by Jesus' disciples after experiencing Good Friday. They saw Jesus, who had done so many wonderful things, performed miracles, helped so many people. They saw him rejected by the crowds, that had only just a few days earlier hailed him as king. They saw the religious leaders who, if anybody should have understood what Jesus was doing, it was them, and yet they, many of them, plotted to turn Jesus over to the Roman authorities. And then they witnessed one of their own, one of their intimate friends, Judas Iscariot, betray Jesus, go to the religious authorities and get paid off to turn him in, and then have the gall to show up in the Garden of Gethsemane, call Jesus Rabbi, and kiss him on the cheek in greeting. They witnessed all of his sufferings, his scourgings, his crowning with thorns, They saw the nails driven into his hands and his feet, and they saw him lifted up 
in what seemed to be complete and utter shameful defeat. It was the Romans' way of saying, we're in charge. He's just another big disappointment to you all. And I'm sure, with the exception of our Blessed Mother, Jesus' disciples were devastated. And we, in our own way, today, may be experiencing a personal devastation in some aspect of our lives. Perhaps we're grieving the death of a loved one whose absence is keenly felt. Perhaps we're aware of our own mortality through our illness or weakness. Perhaps a relationship is strained and struggled. Or perhaps we're just aware of our own sinfulness and our own failures and feel very much the darkness of our condition. Well, no matter where we are, Jesus opens the tomb and comes into the light and says to us, do not be afraid. I have defeated death, suffering, sin, and hopelessness. Not only in my resurrection for myself, but in your life as well. I have transformed every struggle, every suffering, every apparent defeat into a share in my cross, so that by carrying the crosses of your life, you can share in my resurrection as well. I offer you happiness in this life, knowing that I am with you every day until the end that I will never abandon you or never leave you on your own, that every struggle that comes into your life is permitted for you by me for your salvation, so that in the end I can call you to myself and to all your loved ones who have gone before you and carried their crosses faithfully. And you can share in my joy not just for a day or a year or a brief period, but forever. The Lord Jesus has transformed every aspect of our lives and given us the great gift of hope. Let us not fail to thank him today for that and to make an act of trusting faith that wherever we are today, we call upon the Lord Jesus and ask us to have a share in his resurrection, in the joy and the hope that comes from it, and to be faithful for him, to him forever so that we can share the life and the joy that he offers to us. Please rise. Brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God? Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. On this day, we celebrate God's power over life and death. We pray that God will continue to do mighty deeds in our world as we present to him our petitions. Our response is, Lord of life, hear our prayer. That the new life of resurrection may animate us and that our lives may reflect our faith in Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, life, of life, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that the nations of the world may work together to bring about peace for all God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of life, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those received into full communion with the church today may always be firm in their commitment to Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, of life, life, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have been away from the church may respond to the grace to return to regular participation in the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, life, of life, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That God may heal those who are suffering, comfort those who are afflicted with injustice, and give hope to the brokenhearted. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, of life, life, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the sick, that they may find peace and strength in Jesus' victory over death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, of life, life, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, may they share in the eternal Easter of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, life, of life, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of love, hear our prayers on this joyous feast of Easter and raise our world to new life. We ask this through Christ our risen Lord, amen. amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you first for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant our peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, his auxiliary bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, <clears throat> or they offer it for themselves, 
and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, and blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, may we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, <clears throat> and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, we give you thanks. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, and in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants, 
who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For those of you at home, I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Again, want to just wish on behalf of uh, Monsignor Tracy and myself and all the people who are around here uh, working and serving at Our Lady of Good Counsel, I want to wish you all a very blessed, happy, and holy Easter season. And hopefully sometime soon, uh, we will move at a level of this pandemic that even more of you uh, can join us here in person uh, at church so we can celebrate uh, again more fully as a community. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, 
may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in his spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth the masses and it, Alleluia, Alleluia. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wicked. May God rebuke him and humble and pray. And do thou, Prince of Heavenly Hosts, the power of God, and the power of Satan, for all evil spirits, who prowl out of the world, seeking for the souls of the Mountains give with love.